The Gospel reading this morning is from the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. I really like the Canaanite woman. I like her because she is tough, tenacious, courageous, creative, and resourceful. She refuses to be constrained by the box society tries to keep her in. And most importantly, she has complete faith and trust in God's abundance and grace. In this morning's gospel reading, we find Jesus and his disciples in the area of Tyre and Sidon. These are coastal cities in the Roman province of Syria and were ancient enemies of Israel. Jesus and his disciples had traveled deep into Gentile territory. This was foreign, hostile land. The people who lived there were the Canaanites, a group of people who the ancient scriptures taught were hated by God and deserved to be destroyed. Jewish law dictated that all interaction with the Canaanite people was forbidden. Jesus and his disciples are interrupted on their journey by a local Canaanite woman. She is desperate and has come to seek Jesus' help to heal her daughter who is tormented by an unclean spirit. She does not approach meekly and ask quietly. She shouts to Jesus. She shouts so much and so loudly that the disciples are downright annoyed and they ask Jesus to send her away. At first, Jesus ignores her. Even in 2020, a woman's words are often met with silence or are interrupted and disrespected by men. Imagine how much more difficult it must have been in the time in which this Canaanite woman lived. But like so many women have done since her, since her, she persisted. Finally, Jesus responds to her by saying, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman did not accept this as an answer and audaciously persisted, kneeling at Jesus' feet and pleading, Lord, help me. Jesus' response was in keeping with the old animosity towards these people. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The quick-witted and determined woman replied, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. This woman, this outsider, understood, understood better than the insiders did that God's grace is so abundant that it was for all people, anywhere, at any time. Jesus answered, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This tenacious mother has helped Jesus open up the circle of salvation to include not just the Jews, but the Gentiles as well. Never underestimate the power of a persistent, faithful woman. What was it that made this Canaanite woman's faith so great? I would like to suggest that there are at least three things that made this, this woman's faith great. First, 
she crossed great barriers and courageously left her comfort zone. Second, she was very persistent. And third, she relied on God's abundance and grace. The Canaanite woman had to have great courage to leave her comfort zone and cross not only the boundaries set by the patriarchy and cultural norms of their time, but also the barriers set by religion, ethnicity, and the long-standing animosity between these two groups of people. The Jews and the Canaanites had been enemies for centuries. The Canaanite woman was also persistent. How many of us would persist in asking for help after being told, no, you are nothing but a dog and you are certainly not good enough to be asking a favor of me? I probably would have muttered a few expletives and left to find someone else who could help. But the Canaanite woman persisted, even pushed her way into Jesus' space and kneeled before him, pleading for help. She would not accept being ignored. In his writings about the Canaanite woman, Martin Luther writes, so she catches Christ the Lord in his own words, and with that wins not only the right of a dog, but also that of the children. Now then, where will, we go, where will he go, our dear Jesus? He let himself be made captive and must comply. Be sure of this, that's what he most deeply desires. But such tenacity and unflinching faith, the Lord is taken captive and pressed to answer. O oh, woman, you cling firmly to the hope that I will help you and you don't let go of me. Lastly, the Canaanite woman relied on God's abundant grace. She approached Jesus with nothing. She had nothing to offer him, but she trusted and believed that he could and would heal her daughter. God's abundant grace is the good news of our gospel reading this morning. Like the Canaanite woman, we pray to Jesus for healing and know that he will provide. provide. Jesus seeks us out, even if we are the least, the last, or completely lost. Jesus went from heaven to earth, from life to death to resurrection life, so that we all might know of God's great love. Jesus does not offer us the crumbs, but invites us to a rich feast. Jesus offers his own body and blood for us at the communion table, where there is room for everyone, even the saints who have gone before us. I wonder, what would happen if we all approached the calls on our lives with the same courageous, barrier-crossing, persistent, tenacious, grace-filled faith of the Canaanite woman? What would happen to our congregation and our ministries if we set our anxieties aside and crossed the ethnic, cultural, political, gender, and social boundaries? What if we persisted in the face of seemingly impossible obstacles? What would it look like if our congregation fully relied on God's abundance and grace? What if all the people of God did? Would the world be about to turn? Maybe it's time to find out. Please pray with me. Oh Lord, too often we have become ensnared in the subtle lies of the enemy, relying on human rules instead of embracing the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to hear and understand for they have been dulled by the piercing loudness of a world gone mad. Turn our thoughts to you, O oh Lord, that we would hear so that our souls would live, for in you and through you alone is the life we seek. Amen.